hello students so today we are i'm going to discuss about uh, one of the topic and the parasitology parasitology is the study of parasite so in today's topic i'm going to talk about ankylostoma duodenum so this ankylostoma duodenum mostly it is found or the habitat of this parasite is like uh, the other worms live in the small intestines of infected person mostly in the jejunum less often in the duodenum and infrequently in the ileum so we have here is the morphology before we move on with the later we will have the life cycle we need to know the morphologies of the parasites so here the what are the morph morphology we have in ankylostoma duodenum out here <coughs> we have the adult worm that includes the uh, male worm and female worm then we have the eggs so first we'll see with the adult worm the adult worm they are relatively stout cylindroid cylindroidal worms they are pale pink or grayish white but may appear reddish brown due to ingested blood and the body is curved with the dorsal aspect concave and the ventral aspect con convex so the anterior end is somewhat constricted and bent dorsally in the same direction of general body curvature and the, this cervical curvature gave it the name hookworm the other name or the common name for this parasite and kylostoma duodenal is also known as hookworm so the mouth of this parasite is the mouth is not at the tip but directly dorsally the prominent buccal capsule re reinforced with a hard chitin like substance carries around six teeth four hook like teeth ventrally and two knob like with a median cleft dorsally so this is in general about the adult worm so the we will see with the male worm okay so in case of the male worm it is smaller if we compare it to the female worm as you can see the figure right so the male worm it is smaller than the female worm around 8 to 11 millimeter in length and 0.4 millimeter in thickness so the posterior end of the male is expanded into a copulatory bursa which consists of three lobes one dorsal and two lateral and each of this lobe is supported by three, uh, 13 fleshy chitinous rays five each in lateral lobes and three in dorsal lobe one dorsal and two extra dorsal rays so the dorsal ray in part is partially divided at the tip and each division is tripatrite the pattern of the rays helps in distinguishing between different species so we also have a cloaca the cloaca into which the rectum and genital canal open is situated within the copulatory bursa then there are also two long retractile bristle like copulatory scales the tips of which project from the bursa so that is for the male worm coming to the female worm here it is larger if we compare to the male worm the size around 10 to 13 mm long and 0.6 mm thick so its hind end is conoid with a subterminal anus situated ventrally the vulva opens ventrally at the junction of the middle and posterior thirds of the body and the vagina leads to two intricately coiled ovarian tubes which occupy the hind and middle parts of the worm and uh, during copulation the male attach its copulatory bursa to the vulva and the copulating pair therefore presents a y-shaped appearance 
So the sexes are easily differentiated by their size, the shape of the posterior end and the position of the genital opening. So that is how we differentiate the male from the female worm. Then we have the next morphology that is the egg. So the egg of the hook worm or ankylostoma duodenal is oval or elliptical measuring 60 micrometer by 40 micrometer. You can see the picture right. The first picture or the first figure is the microscopic picture. This is what we can see under the microscope. Okay. Then this hookworm egg, it is colorless, not bile stain. We don't stain it with bile stain. So it is surrounded by a thin transparent hyaline shell membrane. They float in saturated salt solution. If we perform saturated salt solution method, they will float in the surface. Okay. Then when released by the worm in the intestine, the egg contains an, an unsegmented ovum. So during its passage down the intestine, the ovum develops. Okay. And when it is passed in feces, the egg contains a segmented ovum, usually with uh, around four or eight blastomeres. Okay, you can see the middle, you can see the figure, right? In the middle, we have the blastomeres. So there is a clear space between the segmented ovum and the egg shell. And a single female worm can lay about 25,000 to 30,000 eggs in a day and some 15 to sorry 18 to 54 million during its lifetime so that is the about the egg of the hookworm okay then next we have coming is the life cycle so this life cycle of Ankylostoma is completed in a single host because some parasite will require two holes, three holes. So it depends on the parasite. So this ankylostoma it will complete in a single host only. So we have the definitive host. It can be humans. Okay, humans are the only natural host. We don't have intermediate host in this. Uh, parasite like we compared to other helminths this parasite it comes under helminths we have protozoa and helminths right so this is under helminths so we don't have intermediate host out here we have only the definitive host and that definitive host is the human so the infective form of this uh, parasite it is third stage lariform larva okay so here the adult worm inhibiting the small intestine of man attach themselves to the mucous membrane by means of their mouth parts. Then the female worm lays eggs. So the eggs containing segmented ova with four blastomeres are passed out in the feces of infected person. And eggs freshly passed in the feces are not infective for humans. Okay. When we deposit, when it is deposited in the soil, the embryo develops inside the eggs and its development takes place optimally in sandy loamy soil with decaying vegetation under a moist, warm, shady environment. So in about two days, a rapidity form larva measuring 250 micrometer in length hatches out of the egg. So it feeds on bacteria and other organic matter in the soil and grow in size. It will increase in size. Then in mold twice on the third and fifth days after hatching to become the third stage infective filariform larva. This filariform is about 500 to 600 micrometer long with a sharp pointed tail. So the filariform larva are non-feeding. They can live in the soil for around 5 to 6 weeks with their heads waving in the air waiting for their host. So they can also ascend on blades of grass or other vegetation being carried in capillary water. 
on the surface okay and direct sunlight drying or salt water can kill this larva so the mode of infection of this parasite so when a person walks how do we get the this parasite so the mode of infection is when a person walks barefoot barefooted on soil containing the filariform larva they penetrate the skin and enter the subcutaneous tissue so the common sites of entry are the skin between the toes the dorsum of the foot and the middle aspect of the sole and in farm workers or farmers and miners the larva may uh, penetrate the skin of the hands and rarely you will see infection may takes place by the oral route in case of this parasite then the filariform larva being carried on contaminated vegetables or fruits so the larva may penetrate the buccal mucosa to reach the venous circulation and complete the their migration via the lungs okay then <coughs> sorry the transmammary and transplacental transmission has been also reported for this parasite and telostoma but not for the necator that is another parasite okay then inside the human body the larva are carried along the venous circulation to the right side of the heart and to the lungs here they escape from the pulmonary capillaries into the alveoli migrate up the respiratory tract to the pharynx and they are swallowed reaching their final destination that is the small intestine then during migration or after reaching on reaching the oesophagus they undergo third molting so they feed they will grow in size and undergo a fourth and final molting in the small intestine and develop the buccal capsule by which they will attach themselves to the small intestine and grow into the adult worms so there is no multiplication in the host and a single infective larva will develops into a single adult male or female worm so it will takes it takes usually about 6 weeks from the time of infection for the adult worms to become sexually